everybody uh, part four of the install of the uh, reverse of osmosis system that I've been fitting and making uh, thank you for coming back this will be it's kind of the final part but if you watch my channel uh, then you'll see it evolve over the months between now and and the end of the year when it's running absolutely perfect it takes probably takes about a year I would say for these systems to kick in properly and do their business uh, Watch the video and then afterwards, if you've got any questions and so on, please uh, write in the comments below, get in touch with me and I'll answer any questions you've got. Thank you. Watch this. Speak to you after the video. So, as you can see, it's all on the board there. Uh, and we're going to be putting it in this position over here. So that little bit of, that bit of uh, three between you can see there is going to be attached to my plate up there. So that I, uh, all the cables can run behind as I said and everything else, all the electrics. I've had that running now. I, uh, this has got two 20 micron paper cartridges in it and I've been splitting it on a very, very low, probably about a thousand liters per hour going through it, that's all. If that, uh, yeah, just to keep, to pre-filter it quite a bit before I get it up and running. And it's been, as you can see from my previous videos, my water is absolutely gin and clear. Uh, I know we're not feeding this time of year, so it always goes a bit clearer, but I know it's, I, I put this on before I stopped feeding, and the difference was absolutely huge. So I will be running. I'm going to get this up and running, and in the future, I'm going to put another two next to this. So I'm going to have two 20s and two fives. Uh, and then I can actually put a bypass in as well uh, if, I'm keep, if I want to, when, when I'm doing like uh, treatments and so on. I'll fit a bypass, so I'm still running through these two twenties, so I still keep my water nice and clear. But the two, but the it'll actually be disconnected from basically the RO system. Uh, I just think it's a good idea, a good way around doing it. I'll be doing that at a later date, but I, I wanted to get the RO up, up and running and doing what it's meant to do at first before I start tweaking too much. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, I took my uh, Milwaukee off the wall. So as we can see, my TDS at the moment. Well, that's an EC, that's 0.76. So uh, I can't work that at the moment, but that's around uh, 350 mark, something around that area. So that's what that's what I'm at at the moment, 350. 8.9 in temps, 7.9 on the pH. So that is what I've got, got to alter about. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is, I've got to change all this pipe work around, as we say, because I was running straight from it. But I'm gonna take that back pipe out, put a T piece in, uh, so this tees off, I'll show you all that as I go, uh, and then I'll run back around there, so this, this white pipe here will be missing, gone as well. I don't have a general tidy up in this situation, but it's all going to get, this top here I'm going to put, uh, I've got some ply in there, I'm going to fill all the gaps in, because I, just like, I don't like anything falling down and so on, so if I fill all these gaps in with a bit of ply, paint and grey to match the walls, which are going to be grey as well, uh, yeah I think it just, it'll just look nice and neat, so that's what I'm heading for, a nice and neat finish. Uh, so let me crack on, uh, I'll get this on the wall because no one wants to see me putting it on the wall because basically it's four screws. So uh, let me attach all this, get this disconnected and then we'll go from there. So just before I show you, I've got that on the wall now. Uh, it's been cut down to 900, so this back ball is 900. So it's basically the back ball is 900 by 800. Yeah, very happy with that on the wall now. Fits there nicely, I haven't even got to move that. It fits on there absolutely perfect. So just the slight adjustments now on that, should be great. So basically what I'll be doing is, that in there will stay roughly the same, obviously it's going to be teed. Uh, this end here will have an insert, I'll show you, uh, an inch down to 15 mil uh, reducer put in there and then out of there it'll come up in the white pipe and straight into there so nice nice and short run into there that's that done and then I will just run this the pure water which is this one here I'll just come down go across and go into my moving bed chamber uh, I'll, I'll show you all that a bit later on so yeah very happy oh by the way uh, electric tails 
So I'm quite lucky because my electric runs in that trunk in behind there. So there's a trunk in behind there that goes to that socket. So what I'll do is I'll tap into that nice and neatly. Uh, in a, I just use a connector, uh, connector lock. So I'll be uh, put behind there in a walkproof box. Yeah, so be back again when all that is basically lit up. Show you where I'm at. Uh, it's a bit difficult to video this corner because it's so dark and you wouldn't really see anything. But I, as you can see, I've removed what I had there now. I've come out of there with an elbow, gone across, and I am in a swept tee. It makes no difference what sort of tee it is, really. And that goes into inch pipe work, which then goes into. Anyway, where was I? Uh, all that down through there. So, I've removed all that pipe work out of the way. I'll tidy it all up again. Let's get it up and running, then I'll do some tidying up because I'm going to get rid of this yellow pipe as well. It's going to all go to white plastic all the way through to the big blue. So that will all be in a white 15 mil pipe. Uh, so, look at that dripping away. Those are Valtieri gate valves. They're absolutely rubbish, but it's enough to do to stop. That's coming back from the ponds. It's enough just to stop the major water coming back, basically. I don't mind a drift, it's not affecting anything. The way it's connected, it makes no difference anyway. I don't Chris. That's done. So out of the tee, up into there, into the jumbo. Yeah, and then it gets to that end, and I've removed the pipe that was in there earlier. And now I've got the inch to 15 mil mail. So the little PTFE that up, 15 wraps as per usual. And then I'll just tighten that into there, put 15 mil into there. Uh, any, anything that's 15 mil will screw onto that, uh, like a straight compression, a straight elbow, anything you want. I'll probably put a straight elbow in it, but then it'll go straight up and into there. So up and into there. So I'll put it on a tripod when I do that bit, uh, so I'll be back in a minute. So I'll show you yet again. It's got going there, so let me just pull it out. Again, clockwise, 15 wraps will be required. Let's hold it on there. Tighten that. One, two, three. Let's Fourteen and fifteen. Snap that off. Just give it a little wrap around, but that's going to go straight in there nicely. There we go. So we're we'll getting grips onto that. Just tighten that in. Nice and tight. So that's how we do that one. Right, so what I'm going to use is a 15mm ISO to come out of there. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do is, I've got, got an arrow on there showing which way they go. Take them off. Then you're going to use one set there, uh, the nut and olive. And then, obviously, yeah, it's going to come out that way with the arrow facing outwards. So I'm just going to PTF around that one, same as last time. 15 wraps. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that done? And we'll just tighten that into there. Spanner or grips, I'm not sure. Let's try the spanner first.
tighten up nicely. Look at the whole lot facing outwards. So that's in there. First, we can isolate the whole system now, just on that. So you can see there, what I'll do is isolate the whole lot just on that one turn. Yeah, now we'll just connect that up to the top bit. Right, next stage. Let's get that connected. I've already put my elbow onto there. So you can see they pull out. Right, so back in, clipped in. Right, so I've already done that one. Let's the PTF out of the way. So I'll line it up. We'll get another one that here. I'm going to say, and we'll line it up over here where we want it to go. So, just need enough to get a fitting on. So, as you can see, just uh, leave an inch in between. So, what we'll do, we'll cut a bit of pipe for there between there and there. This one's already got it's a different type of insert, as you can see, it's a metal one, but it does the same job. Push that in, tighten up. That's that. Got no, we don't have to be exact with any of this here. But it's quite uh, flexible. We'll just cut that roughly there. Leave about an inch, leave about an inch gap. 25, 30 mil in between the two. As before, little twist of it. Gives it a nice cut. Again, always put the insert in. That's a must. And then again, put your, put your nut over, olive over, push in, and that gives you the position it's got to be in. And again, we'll go back with the gunk. Got the old uh, jointing compounds around the olive. Spin it around a bit, so you can just make sure it's all around there nicely. That's just a matter of tightening up again. So we tighten that up. Also got flexibility on that one, so give that a nice tie-in. Suggest you hold the other bit with some grips. We don't want to over tighten into the uh, big blue. But hold that part with your grips while you're tying up. That way that bit doesn't move. Let's do that until you think it's about right. Which is somewhere there so that's that bit onto there again give that a little clean up so it looks a little bit tidier there we go so back to the bit I had earlier and now line it up through there to meet my other piece yeah. right so what i need to do is line these two pieces up with the other part as you can see it hasn't got to be exact but let's, let's do this one by eye and i'm thinking about that area there I'll just slice that off again twisting Again, insert. And what we can do is we can push that into the other one there. And that's gone in nicely. Clip it in. And that looks to me not bad for line. I'm going to knit, just take a touch off of that. So I don't know if you can see it. When you're thinking about, I'm, a little, I'm probably about five or six mil too long. So I want this looking neat. Just whip that off. And then a little trick, put that in between there. That slides them out. So take five, oh, a bit more off of that. There we go. Push that back in, put that in. Yeah, lovely. 
and now I can see that we are actually in line quite nicely. Spin that around so we've got white pipe showing. So again, inserting, and we'll push that one straight into this one, I think. There we go. This one's still got a bit of movement on it, but as you can see, looking at that, it needs to be cut approximately that area. So we'll bring her down, put her in, and cut her off again. And I think that's not going to be far off. So, insert in. And do that. Push her home. And there you go. Absolutely. Make sure these are all tightened up. Absolutely bang on. And we think we'll just put a clip on there. That area there. Just to... Uh, so, if I mark... Each side of that pipe. Pop it, pop it off. So we're going to do that. Sorry about the arms in the way, but there we go. Pop that off. Pop that one out. Just put a bracket. We'll just put a 15 mil clip in there. So again. You put it through there like that, you can see the centre of the line anyway then, so you can just drill it on. And that's that on there. Again, push it all together. Happy with that. Push her in. And that's that one done. That one in. Push your clips up. And that looks very nice. Kind of just leap into there like that, keeps it out of the way. Then, what we're going to do is, that's all connected right the way through. Let's do the final connection over there, which I'm not going to show you, but basically I'm just going to put a bit of pipe and an elbow in between there, and a valve over there. And then I can uh, turn the water on, because everything should be fine, up until, once I turn that point off here, uh, I can make sure I've got no leaks in the, other, in the rest of the system, without, without worrying about filling this up yet. So, be back with you. Right, in a moment. Water's on. Uh, I've purged these, so we're just pushing them down, pushing that down, just lets the air out. Uh, and as you can see, up to that point, we are bone dry. Absolutely bone dry. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Not one drip. And now I can get on with tidying all my pipes up and so on. Uh, changing my white pipe, we'll change that in a minute as well. Uh, because I'm going to eventually, all this is going to be boarded up, so you won't see any of this in here. And there'll be a, a top all the way around. So you're not going to see any of that at all. And then my pump, my uh, air pump there, can just sit in that nice, in that back corner on the new top. And I can shorten that pipe, so I'll get a lot more uh, airflow in a moving bed. The shorter that bike, the better. But that's the latest stage in my filter house process. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the waste and the pure pure water. So I'll be back again in a minute when I've got this ready to go. Right, time to do the final bits and pieces on here. Uh, three eighth, a quarter inch. We'll do the uh, waistline first, so we're going to have this on here. So we'll cut a bit of pipe in between the two. Uh, one and both the same, so I'm going to cut them both the same now, so that they're, they're even. So Again, two pieces of this. So I'm going to have it about that length there, I think. I'll put that next to it. And I'll cut that exactly the same. So that way they're in line. This simply, again, just push in. As you can hear, I'm in the filter house now, so the drum's going off. I do apologise, but that's coif. There you go. That's both of them pushed in. 
I've done both of them. And then I've got my TDS meter. So I've got my in, as you can see. We're in and out on these. In. It did say out on there, but it's gone. But that is out. <laughs> anyway, so the in, yeah, that goes to my waste water. So this is my waste water. So you're doing it, red goes to waste. Yeah. And that says in, but you'll see why. Okay. And these just simply push in like that. And that's in. And if you look in there, you can just see the two probes. So they're going to pick up the water that goes through them. So let's push them into there. There we go. Nice and neat. And then I'll just push it out of the back. Feed that back through, out of the way. So it's all going to look nice and neat. There we go. Put that to the side there. Lovely. Same with the next one. This is your pure water and that'll be the out. So we know how much we're getting out. Again. Push that in. Again. Into the pure water one. That's gone in. Lovely jubbly, as they say. And again, push that out of the back, out of the way. That's them in there. Nice and neat. What we'll do. When we go to run this out, we'll put another clip in to hold it all nicely in line. So that's those two done. And what we could do is, I suppose we could put a clip in here, here and here. Yeah, just to keep it all nice and light in line now. So that would be quite nice, wouldn't it, if we did that. But there we go. That's that connected up. So that is that, that simple. Yeah, so I'll spin that round so we can see it. That's your in, and that is on your waistline. Okay, out goes on your pure line. So, it's as simple as that. And then, basically, I'm going to run over to my moving bed with my pure, and then that's going to go straight down and over to my drum uh, that's buried in the corner of the filter house, the waste. And that will just run out to waste permanently. So there we go. The next stage is setting all this up and getting it running. So, as I say, I've got water here. So look out, the big turn on is coming on any minute now. So back to where I am on the waistline is now run. Goes behind all of here and comes out down here. And then into my barrel down there. So that's my waistline back over there. That's coming out all nice and neat. That's behind there. Clip down. And runs into this section here that goes back to the pond. So that's that. So now I've got all my power on. Everything ready to go. So, we should turn the water on. Now that is the water on. So, fully on there. And that now means that that system is powered up to that solenoid. So, that switch is on already because it's on my tapo plug. So, we're on up there as well, which is giving us our readings, as I say. Temperature's looking good, we're up to 9.9, so it shows how mild it is this time of year. Uh, the boiler's not even kicked in at all today. Uh, 7.9, and we're at 8.1, uh, sorry, 0.81 uh, on the MS. So that's what we've got to get down. And we will. We'll watch it come down slowly. So we're going to do the first fire up. Uh, I've set the tapo plug, tapo plug, so I will go through system, but they go off uh, starting at 6 o'clock in the morning through till the last one is 8 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night. 9 o'clock at night, I think. Anyway, I'll talk about that. But 
here we go so what i'll do is obviously this is setting my i'm going to get my wattage right and everything on here first to get the power for this pump so it doesn't run too hot uh, and i'll adjust this to get the pressure to where i need it to be to get the correct flows so we'll power up uh, and then I'll, I'll tinker about so I'll be back with you in a minute so here's another little update uh, just to add on to the end of the video uh, as you can see my settings and so on it's now been running probably just over a week now we are now running at that's 220 TDS uh, 7.5 pH which is a hell of a lot better than what it was and now producing once 77 litres of water, so that's, that's the RO water, and I'm chucking out 0.70 of the rubbish. So that's that's nice, nice, nice numbers. Producing a lot more water to waste now, because I've got less waste in the water. Uh, that push of that. Yeah, so even part per million have come right down to 6.38. And going out is six, so happy with that. Uh, we're currently at, as you say, 16.9 degrees in the pond. Uh, that is running at around 100 PSI, because I've got that down, filled, down as low as I can through the very speed. So it's all running, and as you can hear, uh, this was the best thing I ever done was change that pressure gauge. It's, it's, it's totally a different animal, uh, sound-wise. You can't hear it at all. Just a slight hum. So that's all good. So I just thought I'd give you a little update on where I am on that, as this will be basically the last video on the, on the RO and how it's running. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, at the end, obviously, I cut it a little bit short. Uh, I didn't want to go too much into detail of how to run this system because it would get very confusing. That's another issue altogether. Uh, basically, this build was about... This, these videos have been to, to build the system. Running it's a different thing altogether. Uh, it comes with time and knowledge of how to run these systems. Uh, I'm a plumber. I know a lot about plumbing and reverse osmosis systems and so on. And I've got friends who have got the systems. So for me, it helps because I have two sides of knowledge on it. Uh, so I don't, I, I, look, I recommend you build one if you've, got, if you've got the time and you want to do it. But I'm going to warn you, don't just think you can build this and throw it on your pond and you're going to have RO water and you're going to have no problems. It's not that simple. So think before you do this. Uh, there's a few other people having it at Phil, Telford Koi Pond. He's bought one from uh, through Finch Filtration, uh, Mr. Andy Finch. Yeah, guys like him know his stuff as well. Never a good person to buy it from. I'm not saying I won't make you one. If you want me to make you one, I will make you one. Uh, and I will set it up for you if you want that done, if you're in my sort of area. Uh, I'm not doing this as a business, so I'll only do people who's, who, who are roughly within a few miles of me. You know what I mean? I'm down in the south. I'm not showing up north to do it or so on. Uh, I would make you a board up if you want a board and I would send it out to you or, or get it however to you. That's fine. But uh, as for setting them up and that, it's, for me, it's a hobby, not a business. So I'll leave it at that. Hence, when I got to the end, I just showed you the settings of what I've got and what I'm at and not the full, uh, shall we say, kit and caboodle of how to use it and how it runs. Uh, because that will be unfair on other people who make these systems and myself. Uh, I don't want to take any liability showing people how to do it if you do it wrong. That's been, I think I'm being uh, correct in not killing your fish. <laughs> uh, putting it plainly. Uh, I don't want any, any part of uh, you, you coming to me, well, you, you've shown me how to make this RO system. I put it in my pond and now my water's uh, at dangerous levels. Uh, and my fish aren't liking it because it is a very very fine line you can run this on don't get me wrong you could use it and uh not go as low as say i'm going to go or other people 
So, and then it wouldn't be as bad, but you still got to keep your eye on your KHs and so on and so forth. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into it, like adding bicarb and so on and so forth. Again, if you go to lower levels, so do your homework as well if you're thinking of making the system and putting it on your bond. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. It's been, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the build and I hope you've gained some knowledge from these videos. Because if you look at my other videos, uh, I don't normally give this sort of information away and I don't do this kind of videos normally. I'm a little bit uh, way, a bit woo, a bit wah, so we say. See, that's what I'm like. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much. Any questions, please do ask. Please get in touch, leave comments, like, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, all of that. It's been emotional. See you all very soon. And if I don't see you soon, I'll see you all through the window.